Nein, 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 die andere. Oh. Und? Ja, gut. I was bored. Bored? You're a liar. I'm sorry. Sorry! You tried to shoot the greatest man the world has ever seen, and you say you are sorry. It was a sporting stalk. I'm sorry because you don't have the wit to understand. I went to school in England. You say I don't understand English. Do you? you understand English. You just don't understand English, man! <laughs> How did you get here? I walked. Walked? Safest way. Walked from where? Poland. That's over 200 miles. I go to a good bootmaker, Snaid in Clifford Street. You are an agent of British Foreign Office Intelligence. Actually not. I've seen very little sign that intelligence in the British Foreign Office for a very long time. You had a gun with a bullet in the breech. A very high-powered, very expensive gun. 
Well, it has to be properly equipped. A stalk isn't a stalk without a weapon. Who may as well have an egg and spoon race without a spoon? And a bullet. Does one have to have a bullet? Habits are habits. Rules are rules. It wouldn't have been cricket otherwise. Life is not a game of cricket, my friend. Bellow. Pity. Who sent you the truth? You wouldn't know the truth if it kicked you. I'm a free individual. I came on my own. I am what my passport declares. On page one, you will see what His Majesty's Foreign Secretary requests and requires of any foreigners into whose hands I may fall. I suggest you read it carefully. Your passport. Mm. Sir Robert. <laughs> you think we have no forgery when we see one? It is mine, actually. But one of your chappies would call and confirm. The connections are very slow from here. We can pull out your fingernails while we wait. Position. An aristocrat, an English gentleman. I would have thought you would have been on our side if anyone would so. On your side. As it is. I have a bit of a problem. A nuisance, not a problem. You can't just put me up against the wall, can you? We are not barbarians. Because there'll be questions. I don't think so. Oh, but there will, you see, and you know there will. My uncle. Is a close friend of our ambassador in London. Oh, yeah. Very close. It's time you grew up, Sir Robert. The world is changing. Yes, for the worse. We must find a way of disposing of you that doesn't upset your uncle. Well, the author of Rough Shooting the Great Hunter, while a house guest, a welcome house guest at a weekend shoot among the new leaders of the world, whom he so much admired. Sir Robert, unfortunately, went off on his own and suffered the mishap which led to his death. His body has been returned to London with every mark of respect and will be interred in the family tomb. I'm sure the Times will give you at least half a column. And what do you think the British Foreign Office will make of a body without fingernails? Will they take that as a mark of respect on the part of the new order? Good point, Sir Robert. May I tell you my little scenario? As a gentleman hunter, you would, of course, be unable to leave a wounded animal without finishing it off. Thank you. So, having wounded a wild boar during the course of a boring afternoon... Oh, my God, the English sense of humor never travels. Doesn't... You followed it across country to here. You cornered it, it charged, you were caught off balance, and really, it's most unfortunate, almost idiotic. You managed to grab the edge of the cliff, of course, tearing your fingernails to shreds in your frantic effort to redress the situation. But I fear in vain. 
What a lot of trouble you're going to, I must say. Cut above the usual cutthroat, aren't you? Now we come to your part in the scenario, Sir Robert. Believe me, this hurts me as much as it hurts you. As we used to say at Charterhouse. Did you really? Mousy little middle-class school. We can't all go to Eton. Thank God. Oh, chuck me over and have done with it. The scenario, Sir Robert, the scenario. Think of your uncle, such a family man. We must convince him that it was an accident, isn't that what we agreed? <laughs> we'll come back in the morning with a couple of honest peasants to find the bottle. The more stupid the witnesses are, the more likely the British are to believe him. We must leave you now, Sir Robert. The Führer likes to dine promptly, and it's getting late. I know you're there, Sir Robert. Hmm? Gone to ground. Am I right? Gone to ground. Isn't that what the hunted beast does? Goes to ground? But the human animal, being more clever, thinks that running water will cover his tracks. Poor Sir Robert. We'll soon catch you up, Sir Robert!
Excuse me, mein Herr. Nicht sprecht Deutsch. You don't speak English by any chance, I suppose. You are English? Yes, and a sportsman like yourself. I'm afraid I've had a bit of bother. Accident? In fact, not. How did you get here? Make him yourself? Of course. Good man. Look here, I need a few things, I'm afraid. It's asking a lot, I know. Come out here in the mornings early. Because before the sun comes up. Oh, yes. It's still paradise. Isn't it? What is it you are wanting? Clothes, gloves, shaving tackle if possible. Old stuff, nothing they can trace back to you if I'm if I'm caught. There's money in my pocket, or it should be, if you can get your hand in. I can't without difficulty. English. Yes. I won't tell you who I am or what I've done. It's better you shouldn't know, but I've shaken them off. I know that because I've been holed up here for a couple of days. I needed a bit of, well, peace and quiet. Sorry to spoil your sport. I forget something. I'll go back. brought some food. Yes, I could certainly eat milk with brandy. Drink. You are a Jew? Me? Good heavens, certainly not. A Jew? Good heavens, no. It changed. And you lie in the bottom of the boat? And I will get you across. You speak amazing English, sir. I was three years a prisoner of war. Were you really? I was lucky. You know, Alex, Lovely spot. 
Not in January. No, 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 no. On the nippy side, then, I must say. How will you go from here? Yes. How far to the, um, to the, uh, mouth of the river? I'm hoping that with any luck, I'll, I'll find a ship. My problem is getting down river. Of course, now they're liable to be watching the roads and so forth. But the, um, the river... I don't like the English. Now we... We can be an acquired taste. Take the boat. That's very royal. If you are caught, I shall say you stole it. Which I shall endorse. And if you're not, I shall tell my wife I sold it. In which case you will need to buy a new one. Yes. I, uh, I appreciate this, my hair. Scum. I'm sorry. Those people. You have about 50 miles to go. Go slowly. Yes. Slowly does it, if anything does. There's a rod in the boat. I hope you have some luck. I shan't shake your hand because my hand is really up to it. I salute you. You're a sound, you people, as though you need a timekeeper. I said she was British. Didn't I say he was British? As soon as you came in, sir. I thought the same about both of you. Two minutes, that's for your best. Gentlemen's decision's final. Agreed? Agreed. Right, ready? Go. Sailor tonight? I am. Uh, Nobby isn't. Condition he'll be in is just as well, I shouldn't wonder. I'm going home with, uh, very nice. British ship? British tub. Welsh mate. Number two dock. Uh, you can't miss her. Cleanest, smartest bit of scrap metal in the harbour. What's the old man like? It's like the old man. No one like him. Old school. Everything by the book. Luckily, old Vayner's a bit more human. Vayner? Is that the mate? Right. Not easy, mind, but fair. I have to give him that. I mean, he can be a right swine, if you know what I mean, sir, but fair with it. Are you uh, looking for a ship, sir? 
Yes, I am, rather. Well, don't bother buying a Welsh maid. That's my advice. Hey, how long's he had, sir? Oh, good heavens. Oh! And time's up. Hey, you gave him too long, sir. You gave oh, him too long. Oh, I've done it. Now, look, right. Come on. Look, look, it's my fault, so let me settle both sides. It's only creepy. Now, turn around on me. Mr. Vayner on board. I think he is, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Who shall I say us? I'll just tell him I'd like a word with him, would you? If possible. So you're old Vayner. I'm Vayner. Oh, Robert Hunter, how do you do? The cook seems to think we know each other. I hear you're sailing tonight. And? Well, I've had a bit of trouble with our friends, the sausage eaters. I need a passage rather badly. Can't be done. No accommodation. Try a liner. Would if I could, but I can't. The old man's a stickler, I'm afraid. When he comes back, I know what he'll say. You don't look like a stickler, Mrs. Vayner. Now, show me where I can hide, and my word on it. No one will see me before, during, or after we make it to England. I hate to dramatize, but it's literally life or death. They knocked you about. Yes, they did, rather. They knock everybody about, women included. Yes, women included. Better things to be done with women than knock them about. I think you're probably right. Tell you what we've got. Spear water tank empty. He fancied it for a few days. A few days. Where do we dock? Right up river. Wandsworth. Wandsworth, do you really? I don't think I've ever been to Wandsworth. Oh, the first time, isn't it? Huh? I'll show you your quarters. That's a bit of luck, sir. Just your size. I'll have to screw you down. So here's some rations and the best of luck. I'll disconnect the overflow pipe, give you a bit of ventilation, okay? It's an opening into the captain's cabin, actually, so you can hear him singing Rock of Ages in the tub, and I hope you survive that. Hello there. See you in Wandsworth. What's this, Mr. Vayner? Evening, sir. They want to search the ship. Do they see what ensign we fly, Mr. Vayner? This is a British ship. They are looking for a criminal. No one searches this ship without my say-so. Any strangers aboard, Mr. Vayner? No, sir. If my officer says there's no one, there's no one. I'm not going to miss that tide.
see a patch of grey sky, sir. Prove you're back where you belong. Thank you, Mr. Maynard. The old man's getting his Sunday best on, so we must be here. Not too bored? No. I recycled the whole of the ancient island, as you see if I could. Did you indeed? Well, I dare say your troubles are over now, sir. England, home and beauty. Sounds as if you know. It sounds as if I don't want to know. Know what? People telephoning at all hours, hauling me out in the middle of a rubber. Can I say where you are? How can I possibly say where you are and count trumps at the same time? It's no business of mine where you are. You know, I've even had what's his name, Champagne Charlie on the line. I had simply no idea that you were on the German embassy's dining list. Hmm? Well, I thought I'd be safe when I got home. It seems I'm not out of the wood yet. You know, you're a fool, Bobbity. You're a fool. What's happened to your eye? Someone stubbed his cigar in it. Hmm? Uncle, I'm a fool who happens to be in a mess. Mm, not for the first time. And who did this? A follower of your friend Adolf. What? The mad mother? Well, I know he does employ some very funny folk, but they're going a bit far. What exactly did you do? Pointed a gun at his master. What? Yeah. They followed me to England. I didn't think they'd do that. They're even watching my digs. Ah, they do. Look, Bobbity, we'd better clear out right away. Yes, that's my advice. Just you buzz off, buzz off somewhere to Saskatchewan or someplace. Yes, Saskatchewan. Where is Saskatchewan, by the way? Canada. Hmm? <laughs> Good God. Because you have made an outsized mess of things, Bobbity, outsized, and Neville is furious. Neville? Yes, ne The Prime Minister. Oh, oh, I know, I know. He may look like a middle-class denture salesman, but he is, he is, after all, His Majesty's First Minister, and he is furious. Oh, so I've been told, because I, I can't see that it makes much difference to his appearance. Uncle, what do you think I should do? <laughs> Bobbity, I'm a member of the government. How should I know what people should do? Hmm? Uncle, uncle, uncle. I am serious. You're no more serious than I am. Do you realize you could be extradited? If it's officially known that you're, you're still in the country, you could be sent back in chains if they requested it. Bobbity, you see, shooting heads of state is never in season. Even if they are jumped up corporals, they're protected like, like, like ospreys. So you know what you are, Bobbity. You're an outlaw. Hmm. You are an outlaw. And what do you suggest I do? Do? Major Boyd will do what any fellow with a shred of decency does when he blocks his copybook. You'll make yourself scarce and not embarrass your friends. Or your sovereign, do you realize that this country could be involved in a war over this? It may be involved in a war anyway. No, 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 no. Nonsense, nonsense. <laughs> never, never has this Hitler fellow mesmerized. <laughs> you wait and see. About to kill me. 
No. No. No, you're exaggerating, Bobsey. This, this chatter you saw was probably just some bookies runner. Yes, in Mayfair? Yes, in Mayfair. Things are not what they were. <laughs> then they, they never were, were they? Hmm? Hmm? My poor boy. You know, I remember warning you once before not to be provocative. That's not a matter I'm prepared to discuss, and you know it. But I liked her. I loved her. Sorry, sorry. Best keep off the subject. So, you're telling me to go to hell, is it? Oh, why not? There's no place like it in my experience. Look, Bobbity, I'm only sorry I'm not young enough to go with you. You won't tell anyone you've seen me. Don't be insulting, Bobbity. Like an advertisement. Yes, sir, I thought I looked rather democratic. I bought the ring in what they call a department store. Fact is, I rather think I'm being followed. Curious you should turn up, as a matter of fact. It's rather a case of speak of a devil. Oh? Well, why should you be doing that? Because we've had some very odd inquiries about you. Does the name Clive Smith mean anything to you? Clive Smith, Clive Smith. Nothing. Anything to eat? Only my lunch. A few gulls eggs and a half bottle of Moet Chandon 28. You're welcome to. All is the, the typist biscuits. Elastic sided petit beurre. He's a major. And he says he's by way of being an old companion in arms of yours. The Lancer? English, is he? Couldn't be more, sir. The fact that my name was Abrahams gave him severe congestion of the larynx. And he said he knew you and that he was the bearer of, as they say, information to your advantage, an inheritance, some fellow soldier. The Colonel, no doubt, left me the regimental silver. I don't think. Bring in my champagne and gulls eggs for Sir Robert, please, Mr. Pink. Quive Smith. Never heard of him. Anything else funny going on? Anything else, Mr. Pink? Not directly, sir. Only we do have a queer customer outside feeding the ducks. Been there all week, sir, during office hours. And I hear there's another one just turned up in Hillball Street. He's been seen having a chat with a duck feeding gentleman during the last couple of minutes or so. Since Sir Robert's taxi drew up. They've broken cover. My gaudy plumage. Place to advertise. I'll get the refreshment, sir. See what else anyone knows. Where does Peel get his information from leaning out of the window all day? No, no, the Union. Union? Private Detectives Union. They spot outsiders in no time. I'm sorry to say the divorce business being what it is, we have to brief as many of them as we do barristers. They like to keep on the right side of Mr. Peel. What have you been up to? I took a pot at your chum Adolf. Adolf? Adolf. Adolf. You must be loopy. You know who I saw. No one else does, but you do. Rebecca. You shouldn't blame yourself, Robert. I blame myself. And I blame them. She knew what she was doing. So did I. And I should have stopped her. You couldn't have. Anyway. Here we are, Sir Robert. Seems they're still there, sir. If I may suggest, sir, I'll accompany you when you go out. I doubt they'll try anything in the street. Not if there are two of us. Still pack your right hook, do you, Mr. Peel? I never go anywhere without it, sir. Robert, you're getting absent-minded in your old age. Trying to eat gull's eggs with your gloves on. 
Well, I have my reasons. My hands still aren't too pretty to look at. Then I won't look at them. Better still, allow me. Now, what are we going to do about you? Well, don't suggest anything legal, because there isn't anything. My uncle's made that very clear. Neville and his chums would ship me back to our friends as soon as look at me. Sooner. I want to settle my affairs, and I need all the cash you can muster. I may be, as they say, underground for some time. No trouble, though. You, you, um, you keep cash in the office, do you? When your name's Abrahams, my dear Robert, you may eat with the best people, and even sleep with one or two of them when they're in the mood. But you don't trust them. Not ever. Not entirely. It may be peace in your time, but I don't think it's likely to remain peace in mine. Oh, Saul, for God's sake, you're as English as I. And you're half Irish. There's a body belt with 2,000 quid in it and a hundred in sovereigns. Any fellow Hebrew of mine will give you a decent rate for gold, wherever you are. Saul, you're an ass. Now, what about the land? Well, the documents are ready. You want the present tenants to inherit in the event of your death, subject to the creation of a joint trust for their heirs. Wasn't that it? Good man. Here we are. Oh, splendid, splendid. Now, one more thing. If a coroner should sit on my body and conclude suicide, don't believe a word of it. I'll go down personally. You'll do no such thing. A corpse isn't worth the fuss. Just remember. I shall do that. I promise. Get yourself another one, won't you? On your account. Don't you worry. I'm much mistaken, comes the gallant Major. Huh? That's the gallant. He has a good tailor, I'll say that for him. Trailing a taxi cab, one takes the tube, I believe it's called. Would you escort me, Mr. Steele? My pleasure, Sir Robert. <laughs> Good luck. And you, sir. Now. Can I get to uh, Wimbledon Park? Well, sir, you go by Leicester Square and Charing Cross. How much time have you got? It's a little complicated. All the time in the world. I take it, sir. I'm in a hurry, damn you. For the northern line, that will take you to Charing Cross. Yeah. Charing Cross, the district line. That will take all the way to Wimbledon Park. Over there, sir. does that what?
must have patience. Robert, what a pleasure to see you. Well, quite wrong, Jessica. We haven't seen you. Robert? I'm not here, Jessel, and you haven't seen me since my last trip. Of course not, Sir Robert. Now, here's a list of things I need. Bill Hook. Mm -hmm. What about a firearm? No, Jessel, I don't think I'll play it that way. Quite right, Sir Robert. I'm not a criminal, Jessel. Off on another of your trips, I presume, Sir Robert? When you get the stuff, I'll be at the entrance of Wimbledon Station. Ah, oh, here is them standards! Horrible murder! Say all about it! Ah, oh, here is them! There. Here you are, Gump. Thank you. Ah, oh, here is them standards! Horrible murder! Say all about it! The Metropolitan Police oh, wish to interview a tall, well-dressed gentleman in his early 40s. The booking clerk described him as having no fingernails on his right hand. I came as quick as I knew how, Sir Robert. But the West End, they've got police, and I don't know what everywhere. I suppose it's those bullshits again. Thank you, Jessel. Will you be all right, Sir Robert? Oh, yes. And meanwhile, of course.
Five minutes. We don't want to get left behind. Pub shut. Give us the water. Oh, I'm red hot, really, I am. Oh. Do I look funny? Funny? You? No, why? What a frankly superb conveyance. Sorry? The bike. I've never seen anything quite like it. There isn't anything quite like it. Gerald built it. Gerald? I'm Gerald. Oh, how do you do? Yes. Now, you'll never believe this, but I've been hunting high and low for a thing like this. Oh, well, Gerald was thinking of manufacturing them, weren't you, Gerald? <clears throat> As a business. I have given the matter some consideration. Yes, I don't doubt. Now, how much would a thing like this cost? What? Fifteen quid. That much. About. Fifteen quid, you said you could make. <laughs> so, frankly, it's academic. Sorry? Point is, I need the bike right away. Well, we live in Leicester. Do you really? I have an uncle who lives near Leicester. Oh, how lovely. Uh, would I know him? I don't think so. Oh. We'll have to go home in the train. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry if I've spoiled your holiday. Oh. Wow. Suppose we said 20 pounds cash to compensate you for the inconvenience. 20 pounds? Well, shall we say guineas? What do you say? I should be sorry to let her go. In other words. Don't. Thank you. Um, here's five. won't go away, not even for us. Damn the world. They trust me. They rely on me. I must. Without me. Without you. Not yet. Rebecca. Not yet. Darling Bob.
beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies and all the best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. Don't you? Can't call you Puss, you bugger. Yeah, what? Dark? That's my death? Yeah, that's my death. Fulsham, Professor Fulsham, there may be a parcel for me. No, sorry, no parcel of that name at all, sorry. Is there a letter then? Well, there you are, Fulsham. Cattle spoiling, ma'am. Excuse me, yes. A sinister stranger without fingernails is haunting Dorset this week. I want my cup of tea. You do as you're told. May I have my letter, please? You'll have to wait. Ma'am, kindly satisfy yourself. Now you keep away from me. This letter is indeed addressed to me, and I regret to tell I you... I shall scream. I don't doubt it. Your behaviour is unworthy of a position of trust. And I feel in duty bound to report it. So good day to you, ma'am. As your legal advisor, my opinion, pedestrian as it may be, is that you should go to the police, tell them the truth, and be damned to your adult ideas of duty and honor. If England is embarrassed by your existence, so much the worse for England. Noblesse does not always oblige. No. Only when you wish it didn't. Burley, March. There he is! After him! Thank you. 
Smith, the man in your position, I, I'm happy to tell you what I know. The local constabulary almost nabbed him in Dorset. The sub-postmistress had her suspicions aroused, but the locals reacted a shade slow and, well, he was away before they got to him. He won't be within a hundred miles, if you'd an expert opinion. When it comes to an expert opinion, I think I'll rely on Sir Robert. infallible. Find his water hole and patience will surely bring your quarry within your sight. I'm no countryman, Major. You're no man at all. Better be dead. Yes, Major. I saw. Well, the dead man appears to have gone to ground, doesn't he? Well, I'm not prepared to root around in the dark for a wounded rat. Discipline, Clive Smith. Discipline, discipline. separated from the herd is known as a rogue male. He is isolated and he is dangerous. The Almighty looks after the rogue male. We hope. We hope. <laughs> Mr. Drake, uh -huh. I'm Clive Smith. Your wife and I spoke on the telephone. Oh, yes, mate, indeed. I've got much of a day for sport, I'm afraid. I'm a patient man, Mr. Drake. I'm willing to wait. So much about? No lot. Not a bear. I haven't seen so much as a robin up there all summer. Oh? Persian cat up there. <laughs> can't trap him, you can't shoot him. Oh, yes. Well, I'd like to see that room, if I may, your wife talked about.
Not in no aspirin, dear. She was smelled the sardines, didn't she, eh? Not up outside, then, eh? What's up outside? You and me. What a pair, eh? What a pair he was, villain. One shade the more, one ray the less, but half impaired the nameless grace which waves in every raven dress or softly lightens o'er her face. Well, we'll just have to sweat it out, my pretty. We'll just have to sweat it out. Your mum does cook the most delicious apple crumble. Would you like some more? Exactly a bed of roses, is it, Admiral Dare? Messy beast man, isn't he? Uh, have they gone or haven't they? Have they gone or haven't they? Oh, they must have. Them. and down to Gary. I knew he was a stealing of them. I don't really think so, you know, Mr. Drake. How did that happen, man? Of itself, do you think? <laughs> Look at that. Death Watch beeper you've got in that. I came across it once in the East Riding. Tithe barn. Chap fell right through the roof and broke his neck, poor fellow. I shouldn't fret yourself. You're right, Major. Morning's time enough to worry. Quite right, Mr. Drake. Good night. A wise hunter does not disturb frightened game at night. Thank you, Sir Robert.
Robert. Sir Robert. Can you hear me? I hear you. How are you? Surviving. You had a lucky escape. A temporary, however. One doesn't abandon a wounded beast, does one? One finishes it off. It wouldn't be cricket otherwise, would it? <laughs> what? I didn't speak. Shall I tell you something funny? Well, my capacity for laughter is somewhat limited at the moment. You can try. The night you lost patience. Last night, by George, wasn't it? I didn't lose patience. The night you lost patience. I'd already given Drake notice that we were off. I'd already decided that you got clean away. Oh, I knew you were somewhere about. But we'd been searching down by the spring and down in the old quarry. And I can you did that we'd missed the bus. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Hilarious. Shall we get down to business? Business? What business? If you're going to kill me, kill me. Oh, my dear fellow. I don't want you to die. You could always donate me to Whip Snowed Zoo, I suppose. <laughs> There'll be no need for anything as drastic as that, I don't think, Sir Robert, at this particular juncture. No, if my friends take my advice, and they might well, they'll tell me to let you go back into circulation just as if nothing had happened. On certain conditions. Look here. You won't get any more out of me than your Gestapo did. But don't waste your time! My Gestapo? They're not mine. I am as British as you are. Now, what exactly do you want? Well, I don't want to deceive you in any way, Sir Robert, so I think I'd better get back to my friends and clear with them exactly what I propose we should do. You won't mind hanging on for a day or two, will you? I can't get out. But I don't suppose you'll be coming in. I assume you're familiar with the end game known as stalemate. <laughs> well, it's staler for you than it is for me, Sir Robert, if we must raise the subject. Look, let's not play bluff, shall we? You have only one course, and that is to resign gracefully. Oh, and please don't try burrowing your way out by some ingenious new route. My chap is going to be out here whenever I'm not, and he has such a nervous disposition, he'd probably shoot the moon if it came up unexpectedly. We'll talk tomorrow. Pleasant dreams.
Uncle Robert? Are you there? I'm still here. So, oh, man. Because I've got some good news for you. We shall have you out of there inside the hour. You'll be free to go home to your place. You'll be in time for the first of the pheasant. I'm very glad it's worked out this way. I'm sure it would. I have enormous respect for you, personally, you know, Sir Robert. You're a member of a party, Major, which respects nothing but power and brute force. And you're a man to go into the jungle with, Sir Robert, and that's the highest tribute I can offer. Our party needs men like you. Now, what is it exactly that you want me to do if time is over? I have a piece of paper out here. Here, bring it here, man. What I'll do is I'll shove it down your blow hole on the end of a stick. All right. Got it? First catch your mouse and then give him the cheese. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh oh, this is rubbish. The British government knew nothing whatsoever about my trip, and you know that perfectly well. Look, I'm not going to argue the toss one way or the other about what anyone actually knew or didn't know. Your uncle's in the cabinet. Who's really going to believe that you weren't given the nod? Weren't you? No. Look, I am as British as you are, Sir Robert. I wish this country great, just as you do. That document will never see the light of day unless Neville and the Jews force us into war and then only to prove to public opinion, to the people of Britain, that it's a war that's been forced on the Fuhrer by pansy boys and weeping willies. I don't find lies. Truth? What is the truth when it comes down to it? What is true is the truth. And what is the truth about this so-called sporting stalk? Eh? I wanted to see if it could be done. You wanted to kill, I presume, because you thought it would help. Help? Your country. If you like. In other words, even if the government, the politicos, knew nothing about you, you were, as it were, acting for Britain. I don't see what all this matters. I'm sure you do, Sir Robert. You mentioned signing lies. It happens to be the truth that I'm asking you to sign. I don't agree. But your actions agree, Sir Robert, which is more to the point. Let us say that your motives were patriotic. That makes them the same as mine. You and I, Sir Robert, belong on the same side. We are two of a kind. But don't assume that because we both go to a good tailor, we're on the same side. We're not. Look, you're either going to do as I say or say your prayers. It's as simple as that. Sign and be done with it or else. Suddenly, you're in a great hurry. Well, I can't stand around here talking all day. I shall get cramped. Breathe some more of that lovely fresh air you've got in there, my dear fellow, and tell me how it feels in the morning.
I hope by tomorrow you'll be in the mood to be sensible. By then, the atmosphere in there ought to be conducive to reason. I must go back. They trust me. They rely on me. I must. Without me. Without you. Not yet, Rebecca. Splendid morning, Mr. Drake. Rain later, I shouldn't wonder. Yes, well, I shall profit from it while I can. along now and get some grub and cheer up. I don't suppose you've been needed much longer. Morning. Robert? Yes? I said good morning. Did you? Manners, my dear fellow, manners. One must preserve the proprieties, you know. How are you this morning? Reasonable. The air out here is splendid this morning. How is it in there? Sir Robert? I'm still here. You know, honestly, Sir Robert, I never imagined a man like you could be so thoroughly unreasonable. Didn't know that reason was something you cared much about. This is a nonsense, you know, submitting yourself to this. It's pure perversity, it really is. Kilometer! 
I've been thinking. The purpose of the exercise, my dear fellow. Even if I, I, I sign this famous document of yours, whatever use will it be? No one's going to see it. There isn't going to be a war. Your Fuhrer has promised, and we, we all know that if a, a man like that gives his promise. I told you it is a pure formality. Unless someone on your side gets up to some nonsense and tries to foment a war against this country's natural allies, it's it. Sir Robert? What, what about... What about... What? What about what? This chappy of yours. Chappy? Your chappy. How much does he know? How do I know I'm not going to be blackmailed? He's a Swiss. Forget him. The Swiss are people of quite astonishing dullness and rapacity, my dear fellow. A combination nurtured by generations of democratic government and milk chocolate. Uh, I'm rather fond of both. Humbug, Sir Robert. The British lion is losing his teeth on account of the one and his will to fight because of his addiction to the other. Why prolong this ludicrous debate? Sign! Sign and then... You're a natural leader, Sir Robert. I know it. You know it. Now, what place do you have amongst the rats and the rabbits? My place amongst the rats and the rabbits is, I assure you, none of my choosing. So you want the world to belong to the Jews and the niggers, do you? Because that's what democracy is. Mr. Roosevelt and his Yankee doodles or the great Russian bear sprawled across Europe with England between its paws. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't breathe. I, I can't think. Sign the paper, man. You can think later. <laughs> I've got a bottle of bubbly in the car. I bust the pen. <laughs> bust the pen, you are an ass. <laughs> a pen is the least of our problems. Sir. So you are. What? Don't kill me, sir. Name? Muller, sir. Muller, of course. Well, you certainly took to the work, didn't you, Muller? Burying a fellow human being alive came quite naturally to you, didn't it? I thought you were one of the Major's men, sir. He said you were. Oh, sir, my wife. Want to see her again? My God, sir, I swear. Yes, well, they'll swear quietly. I'll better still. Save your breath. You've got work to do. Go on, man. Pull him right in. Oh, my God, sir. Very cosy. A bit airless, is it, in there? Yes, yeah, sorry about that. I won't say anything, sir. Ever. To anyone. You can trust me. Yes, I can, can't I? Depressing, really. Now, here's what we do. After dark, we'll toddle down to the farm because we have to collect our gear, don't we? Oh, won't they? It looks like rain. I shall wait in the car like a gentleman, and you will fetch out the bags. <laughs> yeah, the Major and I, as he so often used to remark, are two of a kind, at least to the casual eye. 
Sorry to dash off, but all good things must come to an end. Goodbye, Major. Goodbye, dear. And remember, don't bring out your queen too soon. I'll remember, Major. Premature exposure can sometimes be fatal. Bye, then, Major. I'd like to give you a kiss, Major. Cotton can't go, my dear. Now, now just stay in the drive. Bye-bye now, bye-bye. Don't get too wet. undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Anyway, Neville asked me would I care to renounce my duties <laughs> and frankly since I've never quite known what these were I readily agree. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, there you are, Babati. I wondered when you'd surfaced. I expected you a bit sooner to be honest. Yes, well I couldn't find a taxi cab. Ah, then of course that explains it, because I've had a word with Winston, and he says that if you care to pop round to the Admiralty, he has an idea that might be rather up your street. Fine, I'll pop her up. Yes, do that, do that. Oh, and Baba uh, you know that spot of bother you talked to me about, mm -hmm. hmm? Well, it now seems that their nibs have passed the word, informally of course, that the whole thing can now be unofficially regarded as, uh, as officially dead and buried. Mm. Yes, if you like, if you like. Fine, well, I'll go and see Winston. Yes, do that, and get him to give you a good job right away before he gets kicked out. Because, you know, I, I don't think he's going to last very long. Mm. Okay, thanks, Uncle. Well, and Bobby, I'll be at the Athenaeum later if you feel like a, a little plain supper and some middle-class company. Hmm? Thank you, Uncle. <laughs> now that's my nephew, Bobbity. No, oh, he's a splendid fellow. No, oh, but so silly. Do you know what he did a while back? Hmm? <laughs> You're just not going to believe this, but he actually tried to pot Hitler. <laughs> and missed. Very odd. He's usually quite a decent shot. The far advanced. I recognize that I may not get away alive, but this time I shall not hesitate, and that is really all that matters to me. Without you, 